Because if it had not been for you, oh Lord, where would we be, Father? I'm afraid to know where I would be. I'm already a mess, but if I didn't have you at all, Father, where would I be on today, Father? So we thank you for liberty on today, Father God. Hallelujah. We thank you for your grace and your mercy on today, Father God. Unmerited favor, Father God. Nothing that we deserve, Father we come and say thank you on today. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. I don't know what you come to do. Hey, I don't know what you come to do. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. I come to praise your Lord. 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 I come to
you're going to increase my credit score because he's done it before. <laughs> so today I'm doing all my homework and I get an email from Credit Karma and another app that I have and it's like, check why your credit score went up. And I'm like, what do you mean? I thought it was like the normal, like, you know, it went up a point or two. Mm-hmm. I opened my app and my credit score went up over 60 points. Woo! And I was like, and before I opened it, I said, Lord, it's up, huh? It's up, up. And then I opened it, and I was just in shock. Won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it? Hallelujah. What a testimony. I tell you, God can and he will. He is more than able. Hallelujah. Is there another testimony that's happening to him? I'll give an honor to God, Pastor Ross, all of you here. I just give God all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Um, so, those who know me, know me, uh, know I've been going through like kind of a transition for the beginning of this year, um, household-wise, living situation, job situation, just kind of like a transition, and um, I have got a job uh, in a different field that I'm normally in, which was fine, you know, but it, the, the environment for me was like really... <laughs> affected my spirit because I'm used to a certain type of work ethic and work style and I'm like Lord I, don't, I know I need a job <laughs> but this can't be it this, this, this can't be it but um, what I what I did because sometimes I waver in my faith and you really know what God can do for me I stepped out on my faith and I said God I'm not going to stay here and be disturbed every day so I ended up giving my notice to the job before I really finalized a new job, <laughs> but I knew God was going to provide, right? I knew, I knew, I knew. And so in that process of me giving my notice to the, the, the job, um, I was blessed with, long story short, I was blessed with having to choose between two positions Hallelujah. Um, within my field, Hallelujah. Um, within a great organization. So not only was I able to pick and choose what God was leading me to, the other position, I was able to recommend someone else to get not, not, not. in the field as well. So God is just God is good. good. Won't it, won't it, won't it, won't it. He's faithful. He's a country uh, pastor. He's <laughs> <laughs> <That's> faithful. <laughs> you know the pastor has a song for him to say. Anything is possible. I want my friends and my family to be more sitting around. 
trying to figure it out for me. You know, mm-hmm. but it was so simple. I had to just sit down and listen and follow the Lord and say, pay attention. And I did. I wouldn't. I don't know. This ask the Lord just to pray for me. Mm-hmm. Let me pray this thing out of me. Because if not, he's going to be raising his money for me. And so I'm going to get myself together. But I sure don't want my me, my friend, and friends and friends and get some tired of them. Their hearts heavy. And I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. If I put my mind to it, but I have to do that first. I have to surrender and give myself, my will and my will up. And I keep coming to ask for help, but I take my will back. And I just ask y'all to pray my strength. Pray that you bless me with will. I get strong. Mm-hmm. And I just walk away. Because I know I'm supposed to be helping somebody. And somebody could have heard my story from my time and made it worth it in their time. Amen. So y'all just keep praying. Y'all love you. We love you too. Mm-hmm. I surrender all. I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We certainly can feel Sister Linda's pain. And especially at a time like this, we lost one of our own, one of Middletown's finest, Sister Tamar Bartell. Just was a beautiful soul. I mean, it impacted me in such a way. Every time I saw Sister Tora, she had an upbeat, friendly mood. There was not one time I saw her in a different way. And that is a lesson that we all can learn. No matter what her life's lot was, no matter what her life situation was, no matter what she may have found herself going through, every time I saw her, she had a smile on her face, a friendly hello, how you doing? Just an upbeat person altogether. So that impacted me, y'all, when I heard that. Yes. It Thank bothered you. me because you don't have too many people no, going around here in an upbeat, happy mood all the time, especially when life is coming at you and beating you down and throwing this and throwing yes. that. People don't even want to be bothered these days, Sister Linda. Yes. They give you their turn around and give you their shoulder. Yes. I, 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 I'm a personal testament. If I'm going through something sometimes, I could be in the grocery store before I even get up my cross and pray. I pray, God, please don't let me see somebody I know. <laughs> That's me. But this woman always had an upbeat attitude. She was all, always seemed to be in a good mood. So I believe that not only has it impacted, you know, us in here in the church, but it has impacted a lot of Middletown. Yes. Her home going has impacted a lot of Middletown. But truly, we can most certainly learn a lesson from her life. Is we don't always have to walk around and show what we're going through. We don't have to walk around and be bitter or angry about anything. We can walk around and be joyous. Why? Because we have the Holy One living on the inside of us. We have a reason to be joyous. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So we certainly. I I I, I talked to. Um, um, I reached out to uh, her sister Marie Bartel and told her I did want to give a love offering from the Great Love Christian Church. So I will do that. I on this afternoon, tomorrow morning. But continue to pray for that family. Continue to lift them up. Um, I'm sure they are going through. She has children. I think it's what, four or five? She has four boys and a girl. Four boys and a girl. Please continue to lift them up. She has a grandson. Continue to lift him up. <laughs> she got a couple grandkids now. Huh? Oh, Lord. Yeah. She got a couple grandkids. Yeah. I, I knew yeah. about Shayla's. Yeah. Oh, Shayla's boy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's just continue to lift the Bartell family up in prayer. Amen. 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 So we're going to go right into our announcements. Um, on the 19th of February, we have, I have a co-worker um, who, who um, is a praise and worshiper, but her sister is a preacher, and she's, they're both Hispanic, and the, um, the preacher, she preaches in Spanish and English, but she has a translator, and she is awesome. When I say awesome, the woman can preach and will preach. And so she'll be coming on the 19th 
Um, her name is Minister Emily Lavelle Valley. <coughs> And my co-worker's name is um, Sister Brenda Rivera. But they'll be coming here on the 19th to worship with us. So we're just going to have a worship experience. Amen. Amen. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. And then on the 11th, which is um, next Saturday, I will be preaching for, um, I always forget the name of the ministry, Pastor Washam. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I know it's on Washington Street above where the old learners used to be. Um I want to say, is it New Beginnings? Yes. yes. New yes. Beginnings. New Beginnings yes. Ministry. Yes. Um, and that's by way of uh, Missionary Martina Hutley, who has invited me to come out and speak um, at their uh, Walk in Love service. So um, as many of you that can, I would love for you to accompany me on next Saturday. I believe we'll start at noon and we'll be out by 2, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and then we have coming up in March. I'll let Minister Andres to tell you about the uh, women's event. Um, so, and that's coming up in March. April is um, the month that I was ordained as pastor, officially ordained as pastor. I decided to put that off for a while. Um, I'm, I'm not into, you know, all the accolades and stuff like that, so, I mean, it really doesn't matter to me. I'm going to do what God has called me to do, whether you give me an anniversary or not. But I figured we could turn that into a, maybe just a pastor appreciation one day during the summer when the weather's warmer and, you know, come together and just put something together. Um, so we're not going to celebrate a pastor's anniversary in April. We're going to go ahead and push that off to one day and someone will come together and just do a pastor appreciation. Amen? Amen. Well, let me just tell you about praise that for next month. And then may I have First Lady Angela coming. I haven't exactly got an update yet for her, but she will be coming and speaking um, also in May. So we got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff going on. Great Love is on the move. You know, our theme is greater love is a place where you belong and no soul left behind. So we truly are on the move. Uh, we got Sister Alize, who was really um, wanting to be serious about uh, feeding the homeless and, and just getting a, getting to be a part of the community. And I, I love her spirit when it comes to that because whether we realize it or not, going out to the community, showing them that you care really does make a difference. I hear that when I'm in the streets all the time. You know, they say, oh, wow, you're really a pastor that cares. You're really a person that cares. And they really do appreciate it. So that is really important to make your presence known in your neighborhood. Because if you're in a neighborhood in a church and nobody in the neighborhood knows about you, something wrong. Amen. Something wrong. So we need to be making a whole lot of noises. One way to make a whole lot of noises is go out there and show your presence. Feed them, help them, talk to them, minister to them. Do whatever you need to do. Let them cry on your shoulder if they need to. But make your presence known. We're just making your voice heard when you make your presence known. Doesn't mean you gotta always go out there shouting and, and, and prophesying and speaking in tongues. You know, no, it doesn't mean you always do it. Sometimes you just gotta show up. Amen. To make your voice known, to make your presence be heard in the community. Amen. So I'm gonna let Miss Andres tell you about her event, and then we'll carry on with the service. Amen. Amen. Really quickly. Um, yes. 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 WW4W. I am so excited. I mean, hello. I don't want to be excited about myself, but I will. WW4W. So, so. That was funny, though. So, we were just planning um, to do a women's uh, brunch on Saturday, March 25th. And as I'm talking to Pastor, the Lord is speaking to me. I'm like, hmm. I kept talking to Pastor. I said, like, okay, fine. And I go, what about like a two-day thing? <laughs> so we're going to actually have our first women's conference. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm so, I don't even know what it entails, but we're going to leave it. But I'm so excited. So Saturday, March 25th, from 1 to 4, we'll have, um, we're going to have our women's brunch still. And we have a missionary, Hutley, and we yes. have Sister Langos. There are speakers for Saturday. Yes. Listen, come prepared, be comfortable. You're gonna have to do some work. I got some stuff planned for us. <laughs> I don't even know yet. I'm surprised <laughs> all y'all. I'm super excited. I'm super excited. That's Saturday, and then Sunday, uh, the 26th, we'll have our our regular service. Um, you might know the preacher. You'll see her when she gets here. <laughs> oh, um, but we just plan on enjoying God, hearing from Him. Look, the the purpose of this is to help us grow. Amen. Amen. You know, and the theme for the conference is, well, the Saturday theme is you are not your past. Amen. Because what happens is folks make us feel like we're still in our past. We make us feel like we're still in our past. Amen. But we're not in our past anymore, y'all. 
So that's the theme for Saturday. Sunday, the theme will be the past is the past. It's time to live now. Amen. So I'm excited about what God is going to do. I hope that you all can support and bring someone with you. Bring a woman with you. We're going to have yes. some food on Saturday. Yes. Physical, spiritual, we're going to get it in. Okay? Amen. Amen. Um, and just a reminder that we do have Bible study on Wednesdays. Uh, we're now doing Bible study on the first, third, and fourth Wednesday Amen. at 6.30, okay? And then on the second Thursday, we're going to have prayer call. Amen? Hallelujah. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, so Sister Jamie, she's been asking for a prayer gathering for some time, so it's time now. It's time now. We're on the move. Yes. we got to just do yes. what they'll say of the yes. Lord. So we'll be starting that this week. This is the second week, right? So this Thursday, we'll have a prayer call at 6.30 instead of Wednesday Bible study, okay? Amen. Um, I feel like there was something else. Oh, Lord. Um, okay. So this this is, I don't know if this is an announcement or a reminder, but I just, it was in my spirit this morning, and we just have to be reminded that we're victorious. Amen. Amen. Like, we, we, we have to remember this because... The enemy is busy, yes, right? He he's busy and he's tricky, mm -hmm. right? And he wants us to get stuck in some things that have us doubt that we're victorious. So we have to be reminded who we are, whose we are, yeah. right? Because enough is enough. Yeah. En enough is enough. Like, I'm tired of the enemy. Like, I'm, I'm tired. Like, if I cuss, I would cuss him out. Like, I'm tired of him. Yeah. Like, he tries to creep in anywhere that he can. Right? Because his goal is to kill us, to yes. destroy us, yes. to distract us, yes. to separate us. Yes. Like that's yes. what he's trying to do. Yes. And what yes. we do sometimes, we allow those little things to creep in. Yes. And it starts to destroy us. Mm -hmm. It starts to kill us and distract us and to separate us. But I've come today to serve the enemy on notice, to remind them of his place. You know what his place is, y'all? It's under our feet. Like, I got up and I was just like, stop it, because I'm, I'm tired of him. Like, I'm tired. I'm tired. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm tired. Amen. He's defeated. He's a liar. He's conniving. He's tricky. He plays my, uh, games with our mind. Like, he's just, oh, he get on my nerves. Like, he get on my nerves, I swear for God. So we got to just be reminded, even through the attacks, yes. even through the hurts, the pains, judgment, chastisement, listen, God still reigns, and you are still a victor for God. So allow all those things that come your way to be what pushes you to seek God, to chase him even the more. Are you going to get it right every day? No. But do you stop? No. You got to keep getting up and going forth in the Lord. Amen. So be encouraged, family. I love it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, Bishop Bruce Carter, you say one song I love so much. It says, hide me, Lord. Mm. Even if the enemy is me, mm. let that settle in for a moment. Yeah. Hide me, Lord. Even if the enemy is me, he's telling the Lord to hide me from my enemy. Mm. But even if the enemy is me, and I tell you that song speaks volumes. And so, Ms. Andres is right. The enemy is walking around lurking like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And if you give him just a little opening, he comes in full force. Amen? So we gotta be mindful of that. We're gonna go ahead and ask our, well, <laughs> y'all wanna sing a song? I feel like singing a song. We'll have our praise team come up and sing a song.
every struggle, sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We're blessed when we come and when we go. We cast down every stronghold. Sickness and poverty must cease. For the devil is defeated. We are blessed. We're blessed. Amen. I would thank you for the Father. for those who wanted to give and had not. We thank you for those who gave, oh God, out of their own budget. Lord, we just ask that you would use this offer to upload their kingdom. Bless it and multiply it, God. Use it for whatever you decide to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Let me ask you all to put your altar. <laughs> Jesus, I cast all your cares upon me because I care for you. Sometimes it's, not sometimes, but all times, when we try to carry a load, it becomes heavy. We become burdened down and if anything like me, you start walking and your, your back begins to bend a little when your knees begin to give out because the burden has become so heavy and you don't know what to do with it. Sometimes we think we're in this all by ourselves and we really don't have no way to turn it. We think, God, have I, I've been so so bad and I haven't really been in your presence, so I, I don't even expect you to help me. But Jesus said, no, cast your cares upon me. Take my yoke upon you. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Give me yours in exchange for mine. It doesn't matter where you find yourself right now. If Christ is in you, God got you. It don't matter where you at. It don't matter how long you've been away. It doesn't matter. If Christ is in you, if God before you, he is so much more than the world against you. And you know what he does? What I found out all my mistakes I made and keep making? Because I'm human. Is he stands there, arms wide open. And all he says is, Come home. Come home. I stand here and wait, my child. Come home. That's all he does with us. He waits. And he waits. And he waits. And he waits. Until we are so burdened down that we got to give it to him. <clears throat> so all we got to do is surround ourselves with like-minded believers. Like we're doing now. We're all in a circle with each other. We all believe in Jesus Christ. We all have given him our lives. And we cast it at his feet. And as Alze is, I start to call Nurse Alze. Go ahead, Holy Spirit. As, as Sister Alze is praying, let's begin to pray one for another in our spirits. Because that's what this thing is about. We need each other, y'all. We really need each other, especially in this hour, in this day and age. Amen? Amen. Amen. Go on, baby, pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're so worthy. Father, we come before your throne with all the praise that we have in us. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. We lift your name, Father, for you are worthy. There is none like you, O God. Hallelujah, Jesus. We just come now to thank you, Jesus, because you're worthy, Lord. We thank you for keeping us, God. We thank you, God, for taking us out of those situations that we put ourselves in, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah. We just glorify your name right now, Father. Yes, Let our lips praise you for in this time, Lord. Hallelujah. Send Hallelujah. your spirit now, Father, like to fall fresh on us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We thank you that your mercy are forever, Father. Yes, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. We thank you that they're new every yes, day, Father. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes, God. Even though we don't deserve it, Lord God, you continue to bless us, Lord God. You continue to keep us, Lord God. You continue to call out our names, Lord God. Yes, so, Father, right now, we just lift our praise up to you, yes, Father. Yes, for you are worthy. Hallelujah. We invite you into this place, Lord yes, God. For your word says we're two or three yes, are gathered. Yes, Father God, you are in the midst, Father God. So we just invite your spirit, Father God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Send a fresh wind, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah.
they see is you, Father God. We want them to see you, Father God. I don't want them to see us anymore, Lord God. We don't want them to see us anymore, Lord God. But we want to glorify your name, Lord God. We want to bring your name glory. Hallelujah, Jesus. So have your way, Lord God. Have your way, Lord God. Help us to keep pushing, Lord God. Help us to keep pushing, Jesus. When it gets hard, Father God, remind us that your strength is made perfect in our weakness, Lord God. Hallelujah. So when we're down on our knees, Father God, when it feels like all is crumbling, Father God, remind us of who you are, Lord God. The power that you hold, Father God. That you have power over everything, Father God. And how great is it to call you our Father. Hallelujah. Our Father holds all power. So nothing can come against us. Hallelujah, Jesus. I don't think y'all heard me. Our Father holds all power. So nothing can come against us. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, and when the enemy is attacking, Lord God, we know that you are doing great things there, Lord God. So we will continue to press and trust you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. Father, this church, Father God, has been through some things within these few weeks, Lord God, but I know you have the final say, Lord God. I know that the enemy is nothing but trash, Father God, in this place, Lord God. We know that you have the power and the victory over him, Lord God. So I thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing, Father God. I thank you for the people that you are coming, that you are sending, Father God, to come and to work for your kingdom, Lord God. I thank you for the musicians, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for the, the ministers and the evangelists and the prophets. Lord God, I thank you for everyone that you are sending, Lord God. And I pray that you would just help us to be ready, Father God, ready to receive the inflow of all the people that you are sending, Lord God. And help us to, to really just align ourselves with you, Lord God, that we will be able to receive the blessing, Lord God, that you have for us, Lord God. Help us to not pass by the blessing that you have for us, Lord for sometimes we do things and we try to do it our own way when you have a blessing prepared for us right there, Lord God. If we just take one more step, we would be in that blessing, Lord God. So help us to not grow weary, Father God, and well-doing, Father God, but help us to keep pushing on to the end, Lord God. I speak to every spirit, Lord God, every spirit of depression, every spirit of alcoholism, every spirit of addiction, Lord God, I come against it right now. Yeah. 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 And I bind you now in the name of the name of Jesus. I call you out of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Let your power be Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
Father, we just pray for peace, Father God, and understanding, Lord God. And we just thank you, Lord God. You, you God. are glorious, yes. Lord God. You are magnificent. You Father, are you are wonderful. The words out of my mouth can explain how good you are, yes. Lord God. Hallelujah. So, Jesus, right now, we just thank you. We invite you and we ask that you would have your way over this this service, Lord God. Have your way. Speak to and through her, Father God, as she ministers the word unto your people, Lord God. Help us, Father God, to hide it and to write it on the tablet of our hearts, Lord God, that the enemy might not be able to steal. And, Father, I just thank you and I praise you and I give you all glory and honor. In Jesus' name. tell you to tell somebody specifically something, tell them. He does not want you to be afraid. He said that's his voice you hear. Continue on your path. God has great and mighty things for you. You can't even imagine. You can't even imagine. God loves your humble heart and your humble spirit. He says you're so so humble before him. He said, you don't seek none of his glory. You want him to get it all. And because of that, he said, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Because of how you love him. But you don't just love him. You love his people. You love all people. Even when they get on your nerves sometimes, you still love them. God said, great and mighty things. Great and mighty things. He has for you. But as he continues to gird you up, don't be afraid to speak. He's going to use you. You can't even imagine how he's going to use you. You can't even imagine. Continue to be loyal and faithful to God and God alone. Amen? Yes. Amen. I'm going to attempt to sing some song as God leads some of my heart before we go into the word. But I just kept hearing in my spirit, I need you, I need you, I need you. So I'm going to attempt a little bit of that. Y'all feel like y'all know the word you're in with me. Need to pass up your name by itself. <laughs> I need the oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. I come to 
chapter of first Samuel the 30th chapter of first Samuel and I'll be reading from verses 1 through 6 I got a new baby y'all I went out yesterday to the Christian bookstore and bought myself a new baby a new Bible I got the, the King James version application Bible every time I get a new Bible it's my new baby <laughs> Uh, not that I don't have enough already, sister. Every time I see one, I, I, I might like I pick it up. So I said, let me. I was online and looking for some Bibles, and I said, let me go up to a Christian bookstore. And I stumbled across this baby. Pretty pretty, but, you know. I, I don't buy them for girls and alcohol no more, so I can invest in myself to do buy. And that's what I did. Praise the Lord. And I fell in love with it of all my other lives. Because I used them all. <laughs> Amen. I picked up a new Bible dictionary as well. It was only $9.99. I couldn't resist myself. Not that I don't have enough of them either. <laughs> Which I probably ever used. But anyway, I got it, you guys. I told Sister Alize and the Just Our Trace, I said, I can't wait for us to get our own building, our own church, and we have our own church library. So all the books I got, I come and put them in. You can just have to check them out. You know, folks take them and be like, oh, I'm going to take them and be able to check it out. You don't know who got it. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, the 30th chapter of 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter, verses 1 through 6. We have to say amen. Amen. Would you be so kind? Those of you who are physically able to stand to your feet for the reading of God's word. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day, that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captives that were therein. They slew not any other great or small, but carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captives. Then David and the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. And David, two wives, were taken captives, Ahinoam, the Jezreelites, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, the Carmelites. And David was greatly distressed, for the people spake of stoning him, because the soul of all the people was grieved, every man for his sons and for his daughters, but David encouraged himself in the Lord. I'm sorry, I'm going to be 7 8 as well. And David said to Abiathar the priest, Ahimelech's son, I pray thee, bring me hither the ephod. And Abiathar brought thither the ephod to David, and David inquired at the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue. For thou that shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all. Most gracious and everlasting Father, God, we thank you for this word on this afternoon. We thank you for your presence, Holy Spirit. Speak a rhema word, God, a right now word, right now in the name of Jesus, God. Speak in and through and to me, God. I am not exempt from your word, God. All that I am, everything that I have, and any wisdom that I speak comes directly from your throne. God, hide me now behind Calvary's cross. Let them not see me, but let them only hear you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. You may be seated. Most of us have heard about King David, some version. And, and a lot of it, a lot of us heard about him even as a child because we heard the story of David and Goliath. 
And I believe that story is told whether he, he, for people who are in church, people out of church. A lot of people can tell you about David and Goliath. So most of us know David and Goliath. And, 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 and so most of us know that um, David was a, a, a man after God's own heart. David was probably the most popular, or if not one of the most popular kings in all of Israel. In fact, when you read stories about the Bible, you'll hear that they came from the lineage of David. They came from the lineage of King David. The Jesus came from the lineage of King David. So you often hear about King David. And and, 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 and for those of you who don't know, David also wrote the Psalms. He, those were um, songs that he not only did he write, but he, 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 choreo he choreographed the song because those came from his heart. So he was he was taking what was in his heart and putting it on paper and, and writing those hymns and songs so David is well known in the Bible. In fact, the Bible says that, that God called, God himself called David a man after my own heart. But David wasn't always a, 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 a person who sought to do the things that God would have him to do. David, just like us, was human being. David, just like us, was flesh. And David messed up. Because if you continue to read your Bible, you, if, you, if you read, you'll read how David was... Last day ago, one afternoon, just up on his porch, watching a beautiful woman take a bath when he should have been out the war with his men. But no, he decided for whatever reason he wanted to take a sabbatical that day. Except he wanted to go on his porch and be a little bit nosy like a play with his thing. And saw a beautiful woman taking a bath and decided that he wanted to inquire of who that woman was, found out who the woman was. They said she was the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And guess what? He still sent for her. Because at that time, he didn't have God on his mind. He had David on his mind. And what David wanted. And he sent for her. The Bible says he laid with her. She conceived. She could that she conceived. Now he got to try to cover it up. He couldn't cover it up. He tried to make it right. Think he was a daddy. But Uriah, the Bible says, Uriah was a little bit more honorable than that. Because Uriah said, how dare I go into my wife with my men out here for the stars? So he, that, that didn't even work. Even after he gave a few drinks, Uriah still had his right mind. He said, I, no, 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 I'm going to stay out here with my men. I'm going to stay on duty. Hey, hey. And when that didn't work, David put a note in Uriah's hand to take back. So I believe it was King Joab who was the head of the army to say, put Uriah in the hottest battle on the front line to assure that he will be killed. And guess what? It worked. This is the same David that God said is a man after my own heart. So I want to create a little, a little uh, setting before we go into the word of God. I want, I want to create a little setting. So in chapter 22, David escapes to the cave of Doom where every man now Saul, let me back it up. Saul began to chase after David. Saul was a king at that time, but God took the kingship away from Saul because Saul was disobedient when it came to Amalek. So God took the kingship from Saul because he didn't listen and gave it to David. And David was about 17 years old when he was anointed to be king, but he didn't become king till he was about 30. But because God had stripped Saul of kingship and gave it to David, Saul had no, had no more rights to God when it came to being king. It was all passed on to David. So Saul became vexed with a spirit. How many of you know people are vexed with a spirit? That ain't of God. And every time that spirit will fall on Saul, he would try to attack David. David used to go and play his music, and the spirit would calm down. And it got to a point where Saul would just become angry and begin to throw spears and try to hit David in the head or the neck, wherever he was aiming, but he wanted to kill him. So David knew that he had to run for his life, and he began to flee. And so in chapter 22, he escapes to the cave of Adullam, where every man that was in distress, every man that was in debt, and every man that was discontented gathered themselves unto him, and he became captain over him. And the Bible says there were about 400 men. And in chapter 23, David had about 600 men now, and they served to protect David as their leader, but also to protect and help other Israelites in need. And David gets word that the Philistines were fighting against and robbing the city of Keilah, which was a fortified city in the Judean plain.
name. David then inquires of the Lord. Mind you, he don't go to six, the 600 men that he's surrounded with and ask them nothing. He don't go into himself and ask himself nothing. But he inquired of the Lord. He went straight to God. David asked God, should I go and kill these Philistines? And the Lord said, go and smite the Philistines and save Keilah. But the men that were with David, the ones that were supposed to be the protectors, were afraid to go after the Philistines. So David went back to God to ask again. Sometimes when you go to somebody who don't have the same mindset as you, who don't have the same common goal as you, you can ask them something and they can mislead you in a certain way. And sometimes you got to go back to God to be sure that you heard what you heard the first time. So David goes back to God and he asks again. And God answered again, go down to Keilah, for I will deliver the Philistines into thy hands. David and his men went and fought and slaughtered the Philistines and saved Keilah. Now David gets word that Saul had heard that he's at Keilah and he is on his way to pursue him. The Bible says these same men of Keilah that David just saved from the Philistines would deliver David into the hands of the Philistines. These same men that he just saved, these same men that he just had their back were willing to turn him over into the Philistines after David had saved them. Ain't that something? So David flees Keilah and goes to alone in the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul saw after David every day, but God kept David protected. And David did not and did not deliver David into Saul's hands. When your enemy is coming after you, and when you're connected to the source, and when you got your hands in the hands of Jesus, it don't matter how close the enemy gets. It don't matter if the enemy knows where you're at or not. The enemy can't do nothing to you unless God allows. Always know that you are in the hands of the Almighty God. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in people around you. But always trust in the Lord. But then the Sivites went and told Saul what David was. And Saul again pursued David. And Saul and his men were on one side of the mountain. And David and his men were on the other side of the mountain. But watch God. Saul receives word from the messenger that the Philistines had invaded the land, so Saul had to leave his pursuit of David, being that close to catching him. Saul was right there where David was. And the messenger comes along and says, the Philistines are attacking your land. And Saul had to leave and go and fight the, the Philistine army. You see how God was protecting and keeping David. The enemy was right there. You ever been in a month? Your enemies, and they right there. They right there beside you. About to launch an attack. And God stops it and breaks it off and cuts it off and sends your enemy in another direction. He makes a way of escape. Won't God do it? You ever felt like your back was against the wall, pressed on every side, and all of a sudden, I don't know where God steps in and makes a way of escape. Tell your neighbor when there's no one else. No one else. So David... And his men left Ziph and went down to En Gedi. In chapter 20, 24, Saul finds out that David is better at En Gedi. And Saul takes 3,000 chosen men of Israel and goes to find David. David goes into this cave. And it just so happens that David and his men were in the cave, were in that very cave, but Saul doesn't know it. So Saul goes into this cave where David and his men are already kept the lies out, and Saul doesn't even know it. Won't God do it? Yeah, Won't he set a yeah, trap for your will. enemy? Yeah, right in front of your very face. Yeah. David gets so close to Saul that he's able to cut the tail of his skirt off and Saul doesn't even feel it or know it. Yeah. David leaves out of the cave and calls Saul and says, I could have killed you just now, but because I recognize that you are the Lord's anointed, I didn't kill you. Stop right there for a minute. Paul. There are some things that we just shouldn't do when it comes to God's anointing. Whether we feel as though that person is in the wrong or in the right. Because the battle is always the Lord's. It's never ours. 
Vengeance belongs to me, said the Lord. I will repay. And David understood this so well, even though the kingship was ripped from up under Saul's feet and passed on to David. David recognized, hold up, wait a minute. This is the same Saul that was anointed king by God himself at one time. And how be it unto me if I take his life when this is not even my battle. Saul begins to cry and said to David, you are more righteous than me. David and Saul then make a pact that, they, that, that David would not cut off Saul's, his, his offspring, his, 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 ch his children, his children, 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 and then Saul went home. But in chapter 26, if you keep on reading the verse, Samuel, the same message advice, go to Saul again and snitch David out again. Saul goes back on his promise to David, and he takes with him again 3,000 chosen men of Israel and pursues David again. But God, tell your neighbor when there's no one else. Instead of Saul finding David, David finds Saul and takes with him Abishai when the night fell. They found Saul sleeping with his spear in the ground, and Saul's men laying around him. Abishai wanted to kill him. But once again, David refused to touch God's anointed, and I think we can learn a lesson from God when your sister or brother does you wrong in Christ, when they're out there talking about you like a dog, when you feel as though they're stabbing you in the back, when they call you everything but a child of God, learn not to push your lungs on the back, learn not to touch God's anointed, learn to put it in God's hand and let him take control. So David took Saul's spear and his water bottle as well. Now, I don't know what the water bottle represented, but he took that too. <laughs> and Saul nor his men had a clue because the Bible says a deep sleep from the Lord was fallen upon them. God will cause your enemies to be in a sleeping, drunken stupor so they don't even know what's going on around. They can't see, they blinded. They can't hear nothing, they deaf, mute and dumb, and they right there in your presence and don't even see the hand of the Lord moving in your life. Woo! My God, somebody ought to catch that one. Once again, David lets Saul know how he could have killed him, and he shows him his war about him. And I'm hitting my word about him. And he shows Saul the spear, and Saul backs down again, and they went their own ways. Now, in chapter 27, David decides that he will be safer living amongst the Philistines. I can imagine David was growing weary and tired from all this running and hiding. Y'all ever be out there just running and hiding and shucking and jiving and peeping and hiding and you just get tired and you just say God I just need to go somewhere where I can have some peace and rest so now he decides that what he used to get from God to remember God's hand kept protecting David from the hand of Saul every time Saul found himself up on David or every time Saul found himself near David God always made a way of escape God in fact, God even delivered Saul to David's hand twice where David could have took him out. So now he decides that what he used to get from God, he will now get from his enemy. He has shifted his trust in God to his trust in the Philistines. Y'all remember, it wasn't too long ago when David defeated Goliath, who was from the Philistine army. And it wasn't too long ago when David defeated the Philistines at Keilah. But David, tired of running, can't be straight, just wants a place to rest and relax, decides to go to live amongst his enemy where he knows Saul will not pursue him. So David goes and lives under King Achish of Gath. And then he asks Achish to give him a town where he, where he and his wife and his people could live. So Achish gave him Ziklag. And in chapter 29, the Philistines now gather together to go and make war with the Israelites. And David and his men with King Achish lined up at the rear. But the princes of the Philistines recognized David and said, hold up, wait a minute, what he doing here? Do you know when the hand of God is on your life? You could be around your enemies and they recognize who you are. 
Even when you try to fit in with them, even when you bumping and grinding and going to the club with them, even when you going to the bar and drinking with them, even when you fornicate with your boo in the bed and he's doing all the things that the world is doing, they got somebody they hold up. Ain't you many signs from the Greater Love Christian Church because they recognize who you are. And just try to explain. It's David. Why y'all calling This is David. He been on me for years. He been on me for some days and for some years. And he has been faithful to me. But the princes didn't play that. They, they, they got angry with Achish for, 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 for daring to bring a known, well, a well known enemy to fight with them against his own people, nonetheless. See, remember, they were fighting the Israelites, and David was an Israelite. And so now, Achish is saying it's okay for David to come with us and go and fight against the Israelites. The prince said, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. You see, they realize that in the midst of the battle, David might start having flashbacks and turn on them. They wasn't taking no chances, so they sent David and all six of his men back to Ziglag. And that's when we get to chapter 30. And the Bible says it was about a two, three day journey. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on that third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziklag and spent Ziklag and burned it with fire and had taken the women captive that, that were therein. They didn't kill them, whether they were great or small, but they carried away, carried them away and went on their way. So David and his men came to the city and behold, it was burned with fire and their wives and their sons and their daughters were taken captive. Then David and all the people that were with him lifted up their voice and wept until they had no more power to weep. Have you ever been there? Have you ever just cried all night long? All day long, sometimes all week long, all month long, until you just felt like you didn't have another tear to cry. You didn't have no more energy to even attempt to cry. Have you ever been there where these men were? And we know in our society, it's not an easy thing to see a man cry because men are taught from small boys. You just take it and you deal with it. You don't cry about it. That's not what boys do. So, But these were grown men. Got back to the camp. Everything they had was gone and burned and their wives and children were gone. And the Bible says they wept until they had no more strength. And then they turned on David after they, they didn't have no more strength. They decided they wanted to blame David. Hold up, man, this is your fault. And they decided they wanted to stone him. And the Bible says David inquired of the Lord. David had to start speaking to himself. David didn't have nobody around him he could trust. He didn't have nobody around him he could confide in. He didn't have nobody around him that had his back. So David had to start talking to himself. The same way we got to do when the enemy comes in like a flood. When he tells you you're not reading that, you won't amount to anything. When he's trying to remind you of your past. When he's trying to remind you of your faults and failures. Start speaking to yourself. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. That's why it's so important for us to know the word of God. So when the enemy comes in, you can tell him, no, 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 brother. I can do all things through Christ who's strength. When he comes in, you can remind him, no, 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 devil. I'm more than a comfort through Christ Jesus. When he comes in, you remind him that I am that because I'm in Christ, I'm no longer the same person. But all old things have passed away, and behold, everything has become new. Walk in your new season. It's here. God got you. Walk in your new season. Because David had a relationship with God. Even though he started putting his trust in the Philistines, and I can see being worn out, tired. Can you imagine just running from town to town to town, from cave to cave to cave, trying to find somewhere to lay your head, and you just tired because you got this enemy chasing you, and you ain't did nothing to him. You don't know why he was pursuing you, but you just got to keep running. So I can imagine he got so tired that his, his, his hearing got a little bit distorted, and he started listening to himself saying, well, if I go into the enemy territory, if I go and lay with the Philistines, I know Saul ain't coming here because he know what the Philistines got for him, so he ain't going to try that. So David now entrusts to the Philistines what he used to trust God with. 
Touch your neighbor. Tell the neighbor. Neighbor. When there's no one else. No one else. By the way, that's the name of my sermon sermon title. When there's no one else. I think y'all got that a while. Yeah. <laughs> but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. Because I can imagine that David began to remember. He began to go back down memory lane and begin to wait a minute, hold up. When I was on the backside of that Judean hill, the same God that was with me when I killed the bear is the same God that's with me now. When I was on the backside of that Judean hill, the same God that was with me when I killed the lion with my bare head is the same God that is with me now. When I went out to encourage my brothers and bring them
Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. When there's no one else. When there's no one else. It's always God. It's always God. God won't leave you. Leave you. God won't forsake you. God will always have your back. All you got to do is trust him. And that's what David decided to do when he realized, hold up, wait a minute. Do I have to mean recognize who I am? I couldn't even slither in and slide in with them and try to disguise myself. You know, sometimes you try to get among people and, and you you think anybody going to notice you. Yeah, <laughs> there's just something about you that's different. They say, wait a minute, though. Ain't you, Linda? Don't, don't you be going to visit that church? Real great love, Christian yeah. church. <laughs> You, you shouldn't be here with us. We met that we feel kind of funny with you being with us. So I, we, we think you need to leave. <laughs> and that's what happens when the hand of God is on your life. And you try to go and fit in. Try to wait. Let me let me rephrase that. You go and try to get in where you don't fit in. People recognize mm -hmm. who you are. They recognize that there's something different about you. They recognize that you ain't like them. They recognize that you shouldn't even be there. And you ain't got to leave. Cause God is so good. God said, okay, David. You want to fight my people? Remember, Israel's God's chosen people. You, my king, and you want to fight my people? I'm going to make a way of escape for you. You ain't going to be able to fight nothing. And so God had the princes get angry with Achish because he was trying to have David fight in the battle. And the prince said, oh, no, 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 no. Nope, he got to go. We ain't trying to, <laughs> we ain't trying to do a wake up in the middle of the war. Can you imagine? He out there just fighting with the Israelites. And all of a sudden, he started having flashbacks <laughs> of the Philistines. And the Israelites, when he was winning all the battles and the women were singing, Saul has killed his thousands and David his ten thousand. All of a sudden, he did a fight and then start slashing up the Philistines. <laughs> trust nobody. And when you think nobody got your back, God always has your back. You can always go to God. You can always tell him what's wrong. You can always tell him who did what. And he sits there and he listens and guess what? He don't go back and repeat it to nobody else. But he will make a way of an escape for you. Because he said my daughter, you came to me and you trusted me. So watch what I do in the face of your enemies. While they got their mouth on you. While they talking about you. While they putting you down. While they trying to steal your finances. While the devil is attacking your children. While he's attacking your marriage. While he's attacking you on your job. While he's attacking your home. Watch what I You always got God. When there's nobody else. Oftentimes we we get in church and we come and a lot of us have been hurt in the world and we come in church with that hurt. And so we come in, I, I'm speaking for me. We come in and we don't we don't really have a good trust rapport with people because we've been hurt so much and damaged so much in the world that a lot of times we don't even know what to do with that hurt. So we come to church and we're hurting. And, 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 and we don't trust. And I know for me, I don't trust. I didn't trust people in church. Mm -hmm. I, I heard what they were whispering behind my back, and I saw the way they were treating me, and I didn't trust nobody in church. And so I would keep that keep that all bottled up on the inside. But when I learned to give it to God, and when I learned to let God have it, and when I learned to let God deal with even me in that, God made a way of escape, and I was able to walk into the church with my head held high, and I was able to open up my mouth and praise the Lord, and I was able to join the choir and sing unto the Lord, and I was able to get in church when the pastor asked me to pray and pray to the Lord. Why? Because God always had me, even when there was no one else. It's a while. I didn't trust nobody because I had all this hurt. 
and I was running around looking for the perfect church. God had to deal with me. He pulled me aside and said, daughter, I got a newsflash for you. While you're looking for a perfect church to join, let me tell you something. If you find that church, don't join it. Because the minute you join, you're going to mess things up. Because there ain't no perfect church. There's only the perfect people serving the perfect God. And when you realize and you recognize that I got faults too. I got mishaps too. I got qualms about me too. I make mistakes too. Sometimes I make bad decisions too. When you realize and you recognize. It's easy to put your trust in God and in God alone. And it's easy to take your eyes off your brother or your sister in Christ and put them on God. I told y'all a long time ago, I don't know if y'all remember me telling you. One way I was able to deal with not judging people. Now, you know, if you get saved, you all of a sudden want to judge everybody. You become judge and jury. And you want to point out everybody's sin. But you know how God dealt with me on that? He began showing me me. And as I started looking at me, I didn't like what I saw. So I realized if I was that jacked up, guess what? It's possible that since I was can be just that jacked up. And while I'm busy trying to point my finger at since I was that, I can't take the speck that's in her eye, and I got the beam sticking out of mine. I needed to work on me. And then, and only then, if I became perfected in that thing, could I go and help her if she struggled with the same issue? When there's no one else. When there's no one else, Sister Linda. God is with you. He has you. He has your back. He's right there with open arms. And he's saying, come home. Come home. Come home. The one thing I love, the Bible says no man can pluck thee out of my hand. So when we get saved, we're saved. Because it's not through our might, it's not through our power, but it's because of the blood of Jesus that we're saved. So while we may make decisions that cause repercussions here on earth, it may even have some heavenly repercussions, I don't know, because I ain't stood before Jesus yet. We will give an account. You will suffer things. You will go through things. If I decided... I want to stay in fornication because I was lonely and I wanted to boo. And, and, and when that boo didn't work out, I want to move on to the next boo. And when that boo didn't work out, I want to move on to the next boo. And if I got AIDS, guess what? It's a repercussion. I'm still saved. God's blood was still shed for me. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus. But AIDS and early death may be my repercussion. You understand what I'm saying? When there's no one else, when nobody seems to understand you, when everybody is judging you and ready to stone you, because remember these 600 men that David, they asked David to be their ruler. And he began to lead them. And they won a few battles with him. Then all of a sudden, he's saying, Cool bodies, ace cool boom, got your back no matter what, turned on him and said, let's kill him. It's his fault that our wives and our children are gone. So you can get into a tough situation that really, 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 really hurts and really bothers you. It, 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 it just seems like this is the end, the end of everything. And you need somebody to blame. And so you blame that one that's close to you because it just seems like it's their fault. They turned on him just like that. Y'all remember the same way they turned Job's friends, turned on him when he was when they was going over why things were happening to him, the way they were happening. 
And they said, well, you must have done that, 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 that. They begin to blame him. That's why. Not realizing that God offered Job because God deemed the saw uh, Job as righteous himself. And he offered him up to Satan. But won't people do us like that? They see stuff happening in your life. They see this going on, and all of a sudden they blame it's your fault because you did this, or you ain't walking with God right, or you ain't talking with God right, or you ain't doing this right, or you ain't crossing that I, that T and dot and that I. And they turn on you. But even though they turned, because David knew who God was. See, I only feel sorry for y'all if y'all don't know who God is. Because then you'll be in trouble when people turn on you. You won't know what to do. You start acting like the world. I were not two for two. Oh, you did not get you bad. Oh, oh, you better watch your back. I'm talking to you. You better watch your back. But David, because he knew who God was, he said, nope. I'm going to encourage myself. You ain't got to speak life into me. Matter of fact, you can speak death about me. You can put your mouth on me saying I ain't nothing. You ain't never going to be nothing. I don't know who you think you are. And I would have followed you if you was the last person on earth. I won't go to your church if it's the last church standing. I won't come to your house if it's the last meal I'm going to eat. I won't get in your car if I got to walk from here to 10 bucks too. But when you know God yourself, it don't matter who says what, who does what, who thinks what, and who turns on you. Because you know God. You know the one that's with you when there's no one else. He's always right there by his side. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. Now, don't get me wrong. Fornicators, idolaters. There's a whole list have their, their place in the lake of fire. But this is what Jesus does when, when you accept him in your heart and you begin to live for him. He takes his blood and he blots out all of your sin. He blots it out. So when you slip up, you mess up. And, and, and for me, I, I can't even say it was always a mess up. Because when I gave God my life, I didn't give him my love life. I gave him my life, but not my love life. And so I had a few relationships where I was doing some things I shouldn't have been doing. But because I had given him my life, and he took his blood, that blood that's so precious, that blood that's so efficacious, which simply means it still works. He took it and he covered every area that he knew I was going to mess up from here to eternity. He took and he covered it. Because he knew the plans he had me, I know the plans I had the plans of good, not of, not of evil, to give you hope in the future. I already know your life's design. I know your end from your beginning. I already know. So every, everything you ever going to do, blatant or, or, or unknowingly, I already know what you're going to do. But I took my precious blood and I covered it. And I covered it. So I knew one day you was going to stop. And one thing I used to tell my sister, when she was going through uh, drinking with alcohol, and she used to get down on herself all the time. And she said, why won't God take this from me? I don't want to do it no more. I said, let me tell you something, Dawn. I said, folks all around are going to tell you you need to stop doing this, you need to stop doing that, you need to stop this. Let me tell you something. I said, well, you got your trust completely in God. Trust me, God has a deliverance gift for you. If it takes you 1,252 times, you can be on your 1,251st time, and you got one more time to go before God delivers you. Because that's what happens when you put your trust in God. Some trust in horses, some trust in chairs, but we shall trust in the Lord our God. And when you put your trust in God, he'll do it for you. It don't matter how long it takes. Because I heard somebody say he may not come when you want him. Oh, but he's always on time. But when you blatantly sin, I want to clear this up. And you blatantly stay in sin. And you continue. You'll say, I'll turn you over to a reprobate mind now. At some point, I'm going to release you. And I'm going to turn you over. If that's what you really want, I'm going to let you have it. And he's going to give it to you. It's important to know Jesus. It's important to know his word. 
because you're going to go through some situations in life, especially being children of God. Hear me good. You became the enemy's target when you teamed up with Jesus. You're going to go through some things. But Jesus said, be of good cheer, for I've already overcome the world. They persecuted him. Of course they're going to persecute us. He went through it first. And we can do. We can too. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Neighbor. When there's no one else. When there's no one else. There's always God. God, we thank you for the word of the gospel on today, God. We pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would allow this word to enter into our hearts, and God. Let, it, let us write upon our hearts so we might not sin against you, knowing that you and you alone are holy, God. God, help us not just to talk and talk, but help us to walk to walk. Help us to be that city that's lit up upon a hill. Help us to be the salt that brings flavor to the earth. Help us to be that light when we show up in a dark place. It's illuminated because of the love of Jesus Christ that lives on the inside of us, God. Help us to be true instruments for you and you alone, God. Taking ourselves out of the equation, realizing and recognizing, God, that it's all about you and not about us. Help us not to look at each other. But help us to only look within and see how we can improve every day. How we can improve ourselves to enrich the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom of Robin. Not the kingdom of Joe Schmo. Not the kingdom of Sally Sue. But the kingdom of God. We'll be so careful to give your name the praise and glory and the honor that is so due to you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And there's no one else. And there's no one else. I'm going to ask the minister of grace to come over here and start benediction and we'll be dismissed. We'll have our communion on next Sunday. Remember, we start we started uh, in 2023. I got, you know, I had the hard time, hardest time remembering 2023. Every time I go do my notes for work, I want to put down 2022. I got to keep going back to 2023. Yeah. But we decided in 2023 that our communion will be on second Sunday. So we'll be doing community sex Sunday this year. But um, yeah, so that that's basically it. And I'm going to turn it over to Hazel. Yeah. <laughs> you sweat. You better preach, Pastor. Yes, I'm sorry. Okay. 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 Amen. 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 We're blessed to receive the word from on high when there's no one else. Mm -hmm. that, God. that was good. That was good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Oh, bless your name, Father God. We bless you, God. We bless you, God. I was doing a benediction right there. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, I'm going to just say this and then we're going to go. So Linda, okay. You say it. So I've said this to you before, but it's time. It's time, it's time, right? And I'm not saying it's gonna be easy, but it's time, right? Right. Now, being that it's time, means you gotta do some work. Right? Mm -hmm. This means it may be uncomfortable work that you're going to have to do. Okay? So this means you're going to have to release some people, some places, and some things. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to separate yourself from some people, mm -hmm. some places, and some things. Might mean family too. Okay. But it's time. It's, it's time now. It's, it's not going to feel good now. But you got to get around the right company. Mm -hmm. And you got to stay in the right atmosphere. And it's time for you to be a caretaker for Linda. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because if you can't take care of you because you're too busy taking care of everyone else because of how they have you live in the past of what you should have done, you could have done, you would have done, not going to be well. And this is what the enemy is using to hold you. 
You allow your past to hold you, but you allow others to take advantage of you. But it's time for Linda to be a caretaker for herself. You understand what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. Thank you, Lord. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you on today, Lord God. We just thank you for who you are. We thank you that you still consider us your children, Father God. Whether we deserve it or not, God, you love us unconditionally. And we thank you for that on today, Lord God. We thank you for the word that we received on today, Lord God, knowing that we don't need anyone else as long as we've got you, Lord. And we just thank you for being who we need when we need it, Father God. And as we leave this place on today, Father God, we just ask you to continue to be with us, continue to show us, God, continue to prune us and mold us and to teach us, God, to who you would have us to be for your kingdom, to glorify you, to lift up your holy and your righteous name, to magnify you, God. We come with thankful hearts on today. Thank you for the service on today. Thank you for how you continue to move in our hearts and our minds and our souls, Lord God. Creating us a clean heart on today, Father God. Renew us in our right spirit, Father God. That we want to line up with you and only you, Lord God. And we fall astray, Father God. Give us the strength to come back and do it the right way, Lord God. Let us not be stuck in what we didn't do right, God. But let us be empowered to do it right the next time, Lord God. Just help us, Father God. Help us to be in your will and your way. As we continue to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.